The depths of Felfan includes mature themes that may not be suitable for all audiences. Viewer discretion is advised. Welcome back to the Death Needs Dialogue Entertainment Network. This is The Depths of Felfan, Episode 15, Grave of Eden, Part C. Well, she's... you must know, you're of her guard. She's one of the... one of the voices of Feldera. Do you not understand what goes on with that? You can't be going to the ball escorting a voice of Feldera dressed like that. Not even what you've ordered for yourself is going to be good enough to get into the ball. This is the first I've heard of it. Looks around at all you guys. She, she doesn't know much. Yeah. She, doesn't, she doesn't know much. She, it's not that she doesn't tell us. <laughs> and she, she looks all about and she says, well, well, you're going to need more if you're going to be escorting her to the ball. Oh. A ball? <laughs> yes. Are you not familiar with the, with the Helderon celebration, the pinnacle celebration? She's been, she'll be singing at it. There's going to be music? <laughs> she just kind of shakes her head and looks at her daughter, looks at the other two dragonborn again, and then looks over at you, Galus. Are you still messed up? In your head? Of course I am. Okay. Literally has been since the beginning of the Alright, <laughs> <laughs> she I'm just like being dragged along by this point. She, she, Why not? <laughs> she walks over to you and she not says, safe. Hi, are you going as well? No. You're not going? Well, your, your dress will be done shortly then. <laughs> no. No, Nani, no. I'm not in the mood for a ball. <laughs> <laughs> This is real PvP right here. But <laughs> <laughs> player versus player. But there's okay. gotta be memes. We can hang out with And that. dancing! And wear my dancing shoes. We don't have dancing shoes yet. Yet. Look at all the options we have. As she goes over and rubs her face on like satin, <laughs> rolls of satin or something. <laughs> like, this would make a lovely dress. <laughs> I, it'll be a wonderful thing. The food is just amazing. Anything, anything you have, the best <laughs> entertainment, the finest bards in the land come to see the voices of Feldera. You like food. <laughs> <laughs> of course, Nani's like, food? <laughs> Nani's Nani's good. Good. food makes Do I have any more of those potatoes on a stick? Oh, it's a, kind of a, a low-brow treat for that guy, <laughs> but I'm sure you can get the them on the way up. The meat pies? As you guys are you're trying to convince her that the ball is a good thing. Face Isla, like uh, totally lit up. Uh, Isla kind of just lets you handle that and she goes over to Ravim and she says, I hear the one who really knows what's going on here. <laughs> <laughs> is it close? Is that all only clarity? <laughs> Would you mind coming with me over here? There are things she's yeah. got to know. I mean, if she's not going to be here, someone needs to be appointed in her stead to make these decisions. Yeah, I'll... Everyone else dumps everything else on me. Might as well get at this too. The workhorse, Ravum. Daddy yeah. Ravum. <laughs> she she yeah, takes you over whatever. and she brings out this book, and it's just you can see pictures of these ball gowns, and you're just rubbing your head. You're like, you don't Not even want to ask so how much yep. this I mean, is going to cost a person. We come, we come to pick one. We're we're looking over his shoulder, well, under his under his elbow, I guess. Through yeah. The, through these dresses, these huge. Um, What's that thing called? A ball gown? It's a ball gown. It's a bottom. It's a bottom. Like the crinoline? I'll just go in that detail if that <laughs> works. I didn't know it would go that far. The ball gown. That's what it's called, right? The stuff that goes under the makes it all, that makes it all so. puffy? Your petticoat goes between your skirt and your crinoline. Ball gown. Fancy dress. <laughs> and dancing see, shoes! <laughs> pictures of these ball gowns and their examples and she says, this is the kind of the kind of dress that uh, is appropriate for that kind of uh, class. You're going to be rubbing shoulders with nobles, people that make decisions in the shears, people that can affect change. Do they know things? These people? Why would Do they, they know? know things? Not not things you want to know. <laughs> Ravum's like, get I go back out of here. Start sniffing. The Meanwhile, Nani's rifling through the pages. <laughs> She's already flipped through several. She found the dress that she wants. Pretty sure we can find Not you in the prop. Not for me. For her. So I'm, I'm totally, I'm, I've switched gears. I just need dancing shoes. There you go. 
Clogs. Clogs. <laughs> Tap shoes. Uh, my no. biggest regret in life is I tried on a pair of tap shoes at Valley Village one day and they didn't come on with me. They were a bit too tight, but you could have been anyway. a professional tap dancer. I would kill myself, but <laughs> you <laughs> only regret that you so didn't kill yourself. Is what you're saying? <laughs> kill yourself with tap shoes. But it would have been so much fun, but I would have inevitably tripped. We'll just go do it on top of the stairs. You're fine. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> If you're uh, looking for something particular, we can do uh, something, but we're gonna have to work fast. It's only in about four weeks till the celebration happens. You have to make several things, and I've already uh, got a slew of orders. Your your garb is, is prepared, the one you ordered, and I believe Erlon paid for it? Yes, he paid yeah. for my fancy dress. Too. Yeah, Orl Erlon rolled in and just dropped bucks down. It was, it was wicked. Because he sold the gems. Yeah, we sold, the, sold yeah. some gems and, and stuff. And we sold your spices. Bitch. She goes <laughs> under, underneath <laughs> and she, she picks the box up, this uh, uh, wooden box and she slides it in front of you and she says, uh, it's, it'll be just fine. I had to rush the stitching a, a little bit, but it should be fine. As long as it looks presentable from a distance, it should be fine for the services that I, I require of it. Hey, you, you'll be, if you have any trouble with it, bring it back with my apologies and I'll fix it. Of course. Uh, for the other business, however, uh, you need, you're gonna have to get far more appropriate dress to get into the ball. I mean, you a can- dress? No, I'm not wearing a dress. <laughs> a tunic, perhaps. Uh, there are many options, are many options uh, that you can have, but if you're, you, it's mainly how much, how much coin you're willing to put in on it. Now it's not a, a cheap venture by any means, but if you're going in to the, into the ball to see the voices of Feldera, I'm sure you're coming from some kind of money. Especially that Cereza, with a voice like that, my daughter over there, says it was beautiful. Apparently. Yeah. Did you know she sings? Like a lark. Okay. Did you know she sings? Who? Oh. <laughs> uh, Do you know where you are right now? <laughs> <laughs> Do you know oh. who you are right now? Who? Do you know she sings? No. No, I She sings when you're in the kitchen. Ah, there you go. Oh. No. Stop it. I would suggest a color scheme to start with. Red. Blue. Red. Purple. Purple. No. Purple. No. Has Cereza decided on her dress? Green. Purple. Cereza is not here. We're deciding her dress. I expect, I anticipated Green. her and her guard to be here. I know it was no longer appropriate to address her directly, so I, I addressed my message to you, Bales. What? She didn't read it. You sent me a message? Did you remember? We spoke. Bubble, 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 oh, yeah, bubble, the bubble thing. Your clothes are ready to come get your shit. Bubble, 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 remember. Bubble. Yeah. <laughs> green. I vote green. Green? Green. Oh, the, uh, she she follows Feldera, from what I understand. Her Felderan colors are traditionally white, cream, pink, red. Green. But it's, it's whoever's in charge. She is definitely Me. in charge. <laughs> Do you white green. and red? What about a white with a red and green print? If you want to no, dancing shoes and go... It is Christmas! Go, it's Caldera! <laughs> you know what? If you want your sho shoes and the, to go dance somewhere, let me deal with the dress. You're gonna pay for the shoes? Sure. I'll be over here. <laughs> <laughs> and she settles <laughs> back on Raven. Right. So, a color scheme. Uh, I'm going to sneak out the door while this is happening. Roll a uh, stealth. Oh, I thought you meant like literally no. sneak out the door. I'm like, okay, bye. <laughs> bye. bye. Jesus. Right in your other home. I'm just going to sneak out. Oh, no. Can I? A dice of inspiration. Yeah, you go, you Mike. There you go. I love using it for flavor. <laughs> a little bit. <laughs> right. <clears throat> It seems like everybody seems wrapped up in everything, but the ding gave you away. The bell, the door. I keep noise. going. I don't stop. I scurry and, a little quicker. And you guys notice that she does uh, leave the area. Roll. Is Nani gonna perception? Fall? Yeah. Dice. Dokek. 
Yes. Perception. I've stolen that. You have to pay for it. Just so, so, you know. <laughs> so what you've heard of the people that are down in my in the old wretch mine is is confusing. <laughs> it, it, it's odd. <laughs> it's like certainly a special group of people. There is uh, there's a few elves. There's in a, a very old dwarf and. Uh, oh, one of the Knights of Oros that just seems to be hanging around them for some reason. But you notice... Oh, what was your perception, sir? Uh, Fifteen. Yeah, Fifteen. You notice two of them. You notice this uh, pregnant elf, which is pretty rare to see, yeah. out of an elven community for the most part. I like how you described the group and completely locked out for <laughs> <laughs> We're going to get through that. We're going to get there. It's a whole different... <laughs> Experience. He's a whole different bundle of fun. <laughs> you are. You really have just become this Enigma. poor, unfortunate babysitter. Poor, unfortunate soul. Chasing us around while the women folk do weird shit. Pretty much. We've beelined your story terribly. We've ruined right. this game. No, 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 guys. This is, this is, we're doing this together. I mean, it, the reason <laughs> it takes so long is because we... We fuck around. We have fun. We roleplay. Shenanigans. You know? There exactly. are shenanigans happening here. Not, not every session we get combat, but we try to do other things. I mean, I usually hit someone with a frying pan in every session. So we already. That's so right. I made, sure, I made sure last session we cut through combat, so we've got some combat to start because there's not going to be a whole lot of combat in this part leading up. So, um, Delka, you see, mm -hmm. uh, as you're kind of walking around uh, the first district, one of the most common ones, you happen to see them. Two of them. You see the, the pregnant elf, who's clearly pregnant. Clearly. Uh, and you can see this old <laughs> waddling dwarf in these in petticoats and, and shawls of different colors. <laughs> like, like a whole a bunch of shawls. Like a green satin that she's just stolen from a store. <laughs> Unintentional. Did you bring your frying pan? Yeah, I was okay. the frying pan. She has an indicative frying pan. <laughs> on her Did you hip. really have to ask Nani if she uh, had a frying pan? Just in case she has several. Just, sure. just in case something needs to be cooked at just, any given time. Just had to make sure. Cook, cook the, the fabric pan. and we'll see what happens. So you notice them. You mm -hmm. see them. These are the people you've been looking for. Mm -hmm. It's uh, <laughs> well, you know, come a long way to find us. Wrong group to approach this, these two. <laughs> yeah. Um, I think at this point, just where I'm still trying to gain a little bit of better knowledge, I'm just going to keep to the shadows. And good keep I'm, an eye just, I'm just going to kind of follow along and see what happens. Okay, we're going to skip back in to the wardrobe where. Ravum and Isla are discussing. All right, color scheme then. As she kind of, as she says, it's a, now that it's a bit quieter. <laughs> you have no idea. Every time I eat. <laughs> <laughs> now that it's quieter. Oh, um. <laughs> and she's looking eyes dead on you with parchment and uh, quill in hand. What kind of fabric would you recommend? Well, satin, of course. Take some red color sam samples and... I was thinking royal white and red, but we'll see see what some of the other ones potentially come up with. The... Imagine you're in a paint store, and they have, like, they just, they yeah. have different little scraps of this one. She's kind of, you know, they have the red, and she's kind of, you can kind of flip through it. It's a swatch book. There you go. Yes. Several shades of red. If you're looking for the right one, uh, Felderan red is, uh, it should be appropriate. And it's a nice, uh, light rose color. It's not too heavy, okay. not too pronounced. Somewhere in, somewhere in between a heavy pink and a red. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that. Um, I think I'm thinking eggshell white. What? <laughs> I don't know. Rest! <laughs> you, you left! It's your fault! I wanted green, okay? Eggshell white. We left Ravum. It's not an apartment wall. We left Ravum in charge of fashion. 
Elo she she, she flips, yes, uh, gets to the white, she kind of flips to, to what she thinks is that. She says, perhaps a little what? bit plain, what, just perhaps uh, maybe a cream? Maybe a little more density to the color. And she, you know, she swatches up through the eggshell and she shows you the cream, and the cream has a mild pink hue to it. Yeah, we'll, we'll go there. Of course, your, your guard uniform will be uh, similar in color scheme to hers as well. Now, for, uh, for a little extra, what are we uh, looking for, for garnishes at the, uh, at the chest line? Is she fancy uh, gems, gold, silver? Um. Ah, how about red garnets and a nice ruby in the middle? Something that has uh, uh, a lot of detail on it is one thing I've, that I've noticed she prefers. But... Well, uh, there's no more better craftsmanship than my daughter's over here, and she gestures, and they both look up from the uh, work that they're doing, and then look back to the work. You can see they don't want to be here. <laughs> if you're looking for intricacy, we could uh, perhaps put some lace at her neck and decorate it with some uh, diamond dust. Again, with the large ruby in the middle, I think uh, the flare for that should be just fine. No, I think we'll pass on that. I approve. I think lace is ugly. I think it's like fine as uh, uh, something that goes along fabric. But just something like that's a doily quite... around her neck. Oh, it's not <laughs> yeah. like no, it's not around her neck. It would be like on the trim of her on her bust. That's what she's talking about. Ah. There would be like uh, oh. her bust down. I, I thought she meant like an actual. Oh no! Part of the necklace uh, things like no, that that would be look ugly. She, she does really work in jewelry. <laughs> yeah, jewelry. But she can adhere jewels to uh, clothing and whatnot. But that's what she suggests. Uh, uh, the um, the bust line can be a bit of lace with diamond dust sprinkled upon it, or the red uh, garnets with the ruby. Oh, you you must have some sort of. <sighs> to be honest, Ravon, you got to show what you're there for. If you go walking in the doors looking like a bum, it's you're not gonna get. The, you're gonna be shunned. The the biggest concern I have is. We use it this once, and then it's going to get thrown in a heap and forgotten about. You sound like my well, mom. Well, honestly. <laughs> Practicality. He's a practical Beauty business. does come at a cost. It does. And unfortunately, if you have a dress for one occasion, it helps to have siblings for hand-me-downs. Or if you're traveling, of course, a new dress, a new place, right? Well, but this is, with my this is also a once-in-a-lifetime <laughs> event. To be a voice of Feldera... We might be blessed again with a visitation by one of the gods. It happened there a few years back. They came, Feldera herself, she came and she danced. It was wondrous. So that is your choice, as you're the, the director. I forget what the decision was this time. <laughs> well, we have the, uh, the, uh, the, the pale red of Feldera, matched with the, the cream pink, and a bit of lace at the wrist and the neck, and if you want the the lace at the neck to be um, to be encrusted with uh, garnets and rubies, or uh, perhaps dusted with diamond dust. Uh, the garnets and rubies. It's gonna be expensive as shit. But... And you gotta buy naughty dancing shoes, my. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'll get you your wooden clogs. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> she, please. She looks down. You can see her kind of quickly, like really quick draw of just a hand, uh, a hand drawing of that. Baby, natural 20, first round of the night. And uh, she just goes down. You can see it coming into form. The, the pencil she uses uh, kind of changes in shade as she's coloring with it and everything. And you can see this beautiful, very uh, massive bottom part, the bottom of the ball gown. Just You can see it almost to the edge of the page, and you're just thinking, this is we're not even going to be able to stand around her. But like five foot square. <laughs> yeah, that's just right. Definitely taking up her five foot square, uh, and you can see how she has the. Uh, red My only question is, do, does she actually have uh, her measurements for this? Yes, she got another dress. Yeah, she did. She does yeah. have okay. her measurements. Yes, yes. Because that's the biggest concern. Because that'd be awkward. Fire dress doesn't fit. Yeah, luckily you guys <laughs> right. It really takes oh no a load off. I remember me. nothing. Uh, <laughs> I just I remember she got a dress when I did. 
And she draws it out and she shows you, and it's it's beautiful. But beauty comes at a price, and you know that this is yeah. Not I don't even want to think about it. But as says, far as I'm concerned, this is all Dermot's money. Because remember, I was, <laughs> I was, I was jealous money. of her trim waist when they were measuring her. That's right. That's right. Yeah. And she goes on. She says, "I that is good. Uh, that is beautiful. It will be a work of art. It really will be." Now the guard uniform. I'll need all yous in here. Everyone, even the ones I don't have measurements for. She does a few quick, uh, a few quick drafts of drawing for the for the guard. And it uh, looks pretty nice. Not as fancy as the dress, of course, but you're not you're supposed to not take away from hers. Yeah. But still pricey. But it looks pretty good. The, the colors maybe not your kind of colors. You're maybe uh, how much do you adhere to the the history of or like the background of the Vistani? Like their multiple colored spectrum. They always wear colors. Fifteen different colored petticoats. Different. Considering they ordered a red, red and black suit. That's what I'm thinking. So you're not, you don't really participate in their color scheme. No, not when I'm not associating with the, okay. the collection. All right, that that's that, that's cool. Then she says, uh, "Well, it's going to take some time to get this all completed, but but uh, thank you for coming and stopping in at your earliest convenience. I uh, appreciate the the extra time on it. I, I realize you're busy having a voice of Feldera. You, the guard is going to be quite." Uh, We've had quite an quite yeah. interesting turn of events lately, so... Although I will have to speak to Sereza. Please do pass along my my uh, congratulations at what she's been able to achieve in over such a short time. And you can hear the, the both wheels stop, <laughs> kind of like halting instantly, and then they quickly go Mom's back driving up. driving in the back of the children. It's the ugly stepsisters in Cinderella. <laughs> <laughs> it's the other way around at this point. Yeah. Yeah, ruh -ruh. And uh, she says that. If there's uh, anything else, I would really, really like to get to work. Oh, one more thing. Here. She pulls out another box. This belongs to your friend, Erolon. It's uh, his robes. His robes. Keep them in the box until you take them. I'd rather have a very plain. I, I apologize, but I was <laughs> expecting something a little more, but... Don't forget my dress. That's right, that's right. Oh yeah, because you disappeared, you ran off. And then, uh... You're following She me. goes back and there's also... <laughs> you have to, uh... Oh, that's right, uh, Erolon happened to pay already. He's, uh, he's given me enough to take, to cover this and then some. And she goes back down and says, oh, there's one more thing. A uh, much larger box this time, and she brings it out and she says, this is... For that, for that... That's a pregnant beauty you have up there. This is hers. Yeah. Um, when I was in with the Erlon, uh, there was a bottle of perfume. I think it was. Aye, aye, yes. Uh, the Erlon perfume. The breeze of Brel. Yeah. She what kind of walks you over to the rest and waves her hand. She says, "We have many others as well." I don't think she knows about your vicinity background. I get people to roll an insight every now and then to see if, but you don't really, it's just your face, kind of your, skin tone's you a little different than if You're not wearing any colors or anything like that, so it's hard to give away. Yeah. So she doesn't know, I'm gonna say. Yeah, I'll buy, buy my perfume. Well, he bought my suit. That's very nice of you. Where are my dancing shoes going for? <laughs> <laughs> I haven't bought them yet, bitch. No. Whoa. <laughs> You better come home with dancing shoes. And don't come home at all. She uh, takes she it off the shelf. She won't be you. And, uh, this is what she likes, the breeze of Brel. You thought they were, she thought they were together there in the beginning. Remember? Don't you think they there were was, dating? There was a little bit there. Yeah. Now he's buying him perfume. Aww. She passes you the bottle and uh, she's looking over at the paper. And she says, take this one on the house. Just taking enough of your money. So, yeah. Now his gift is free, though. <laughs> it's not really much of it. Erlon doesn't know That's that. That's true. No one else knows that. That's true. No witnesses. You thought him. The perks of going to the store alone. Or rather, your companions leaving. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Close enough. Um. Yeah, we forgot about Frank in this exchange. Because Frank he came also, with... Yeah, he also has to get dressed up. and get measured and stuff. Yeah, but... Did he leave with them, or has he stayed in the shop? I would say he stayed outside. 
for this one because I completely forgot about it. Poor yeah. Frank. I, I keep forgetting. The only time you remember Frank is when you're playing Frank. <laughs> so I'm supposed Frank's, to be doing. Frank's not really a person. We, we got him just. Not this one. No, he, just, he's, uh, just he's, just he's his PC in the, uh, in the other yeah, game. In OCB, yeah. I played the real Frank. Yeah. Oh, the bad Frank. I'm saying we Will got the real Frank just... please stand up? <laughs> 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 so I'm going to throw the perfume in Erlon's box, and then we do the talk about how much is this actually costing. Or at least, what's the down payment? She says, well, she's a voice of Feldera. I wouldn't... I know that she's most likely good for the money. A down payment is still going to be a costly sum, a sum I haven't actually calculated as of yet. I would say, just wait. I'll send you a message with the total. Okay. Do you know the set? The dwarf's feet size? The crazy one that was just in? I'll need, I'll need those who haven't been measured to come in here and so I can measure them all sizes. I might need to be re-measured. <laughs> That's true. Oh, <laughs> uh, I'll call Frank in and get him measured with... Call Frank and the door goes sting, he comes in. What do you want? What's going on? <laughs> Apparently Cerez is going to be singing and we need the proper uh, attire. Kind of looks at himself. What the hell's wrong with me? <laughs> Nothing, Frank, you're perfect, I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing, but it's going to be a high class event and they won't let you in so you can't hear her sing. Unless you wear something else. Well, what the hell you want me to wear then? I'm putting on no dress or some damn robes. No, nope, fancy suit. Same one. You can see him blink twice. Maybe I should have put the robes. <laughs> you can pick the dress if you want. Well, persuasion. <laughs> uh, uh, with perception, with the addition of you can wear the dress if you want. Or, or sorry, with the advantage rather. Ooh. Could see that. 25. He rolled a 20 with his bonuses. Very nice. He kind of kind of looks around and says, uh, he says, oh, Keldrin, take me. He looks down and stands up on the dais and he's kind of really tall, so he's, you know, he's wearing his cowboy hat and everything. Kind of takes it off. He just kind of eyeing this dragonborn woman as she comes over and does all the measurements and everything and he gets she gets a little bit too close to to his uh to his crotch there and he kind of slaps her hand away <laughs> like what do you want from he from me huh they continue and she gets uh the measurements and then she walks away and she uh, he says um are you done with me she looks around and she nods and he's like all right i'm going back outside thank you for your time frank yeah uh, Puts his hat on and walks out. Can we put Dazzle for a cowboy hat? Please don't. Please do. Please don't. Can we get him a new bedazzled cowboy hat for the occasion? He's only wearing it once, though. Just for the occasion. He's only wearing it once, though. Just for the occasion. Just once. Say it. Just once. <laughs> Just once. Got it. Got it. Okay. For the occasion. <laughs> you guys can do whatever you want to his hat. Can Nani bedazzle his hat? Oh, no. <laughs> We'll talk about that later. We'll worry about that later. Yeah, that's Frank. between you and Frank. That's yeah. right. And Frank uh, walks inside and presumes, uh, resumes his, his guard. Yeah. You need to... Yeah, the only other person is uh, Nani that needs to be measured. Um, and where did you guys go? I'm heading for that pond. If you got to go up to District 4. Oh, that was up farther. Yeah, that's in District 4. <coughs> Where are those fields? How did I get to those? What level were they on? That one you, that I snuck through that I wasn't supposed you, to. You, I want you to roll history. Three. Three? You're not quite sure. You were just reacting to this way, that way. Follow this scent, follow that scent. You Go up the couldn't stairs. put your finger on it. You knew you went upstairs from the first district, though. I'm going to try to sneak up those stairs again. Okay. I'll get you to roll survival. With Nani in tow. With I don't know Nani's behind me though, right? Yeah. You oh, know yeah. Well, oh, I was right behind her. 
I'm not being stealthy. I'm just following her. What am I rolling for? Surviving. Fifteen. Fifteen? You are walking around. You're kind of familiar with these set of stairs and that set of stairs. But you just can't seem to find it. You're not sure how long it took either. Everything was it was such a rush. It was a blast. And then everything happened so quickly. But you just can't seem to find it. As you're going up the stairs, however, you get stopped by one of those men in uh, in livery, and they say, "Are uh, you a ticket, please?" She just grins at him with this sheer delirium. I seem to have forgotten it. Nodding hands him a small swatch of green fabric. Green, fabric. <laughs> green satin. Which you should probably pay for. You roll persuasion with disadvantage. You might just think you're crazy now. I am crazy. Uh, <laughs> you know, I actually missing. Well, I have true. forgotten this entire time that I have spells. Three. <laughs> he he kind of looks at you quizzically and he says, "No, that's not a ticket. Do you not have any tickets? You'll have to buy a ticket now. It'll be two silver." Oh, fuck that. Seven. I just like throw him some coins and keep going. Okay. Throw yeah. him some coins and he says, Well. <laughs> well, I never. And you guys move on. He kind of eyes you, Nani. And he bends down and picks up the silver. And I think it was silver. Maybe, maybe it was gold. I think it was gold. That. Yeah, say two gold. Yeah, so you, you drop a couple gold on the ground. And say, I uh. Slip the green fabric into his, <laughs> his coat pocket. You throw eight gold on the ground, and he uh, he picks it all up, and you stuff the green thing into his pocket, and <laughs> he pulls it out and kind of looks at you. And Why do you do that? Away. Go on. <laughs> you, you guys are gone. Okay, well, you guys... throw the gold, and then walk away, and don't actually get the ticket. <laughs> well, it's okay to go up, right? Well, Coming down, you don't have to you let you through. And you make your way to district number two. You see district Aren't number we two? Into? You were in district number one. You went up the stairs, you couldn't find the exit, but you know you didn't go to district number two. Delkik, hmm. Delkik, hmm. you see these two run off up the stairs. <laughs> you see this uh, strange, larger Delronian human uh, sitting outside the door, looking like he's just trying to be mean and be a guard. Mm. Uh, well, let, let's play to my strengths here. And uh, let's see what we can do to maybe sneak past him and just kind of keep following them to keep tabs on where they're going. Sneak by Frank? Yeah. Oh, Frank is at the uh, at the store. Oh. They went somewhere yeah. else. Um, Frank is guarding me. I was yes. going to say, Frank doesn't, yeah, Frank doesn't seem to be interesting because he's just kind of standing there doing And he's an How? Dare you get out? <laughs> you need okay, to let me rephrase. Right. This version of Frank does not interest Delkek. There we go. Not much better. Yeah. So you follow Sorry, the other two. Yeah, this one. Did uh, I tra- uh, track them quietly? Yep. All right, little stuff for me, please. All right. Oh man, I am not succeeding with this character today. This is not designed. To no, he's gonna kill him. Oh yeah, I'm gonna be dead. Uh, that was a nine. <laughs> yeah, was you guys roll uh, perception with disadvantage, please. It's very crowded here. Very crowded. <laughs> that one, thank the Lord. And you rolled a... Uh, with bonuses of a nine. A nine? It's actually it's a three. Okay, I rolled that one. Okay, there you go. So, so you're too focused on, on catching nine. up with Galen. So you can only move 25 feet. She moves That's 30, true. so you're just rushing okay, to catch up with her. 35. Is there 35? Oh, he's oh, so she's dragging oh, me. I'm holding yeah. on to her. Like, you know, my skirt tail. Yeah, she's down to the skirt, but she's just dragging me along behind her. As, as she's pulling at you and you're, you know, you guys are going, you look back and you catch this, uh, this crowd and it's kind of, they're all, they all have something to do. They're all carrying something, bags, boxes, something, but you just see this one, this one guy kind of, are you cloaked? Um, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm just, I've got the, the cloak off, yeah. Okay. You can see this, this one guy kind of standing out, kind of following in your direction, but you're going to the stairs. Okay. So, I mean, that's just a direction. And yeah, he kind of stands out because of his garb, and perhaps just some sort of garb or something, you're not quite sure. You don't really get too much. Mostly dwarves. 
<laughs> yeah, that helps. But you do. But it's it's not too uncommon to see a dragonborn walking around up here, and they're usually walking around alone. So it's not uncommon. But these, you know, walking towards the stairs like you guys are. Okay, so we've made it onto level two. Yep. You guys, you also walk by the guard, mm-hmm. and he says, "I, where's your ticket?" Um, I am gonna roll sleight of hand and just pass him a, what looks to be a ticket-sized piece of paper and see if he can uh, determine it. Oh, jeebus. That was a nat one. I'm failing miserably. I'm gonna die. <laughs> <laughs> he takes the piece of paper and he says, Hey, hold on a second now. What is this? This yeah. is just a blank piece of paper. <laughs> yeah. If you don't have a ticket, it'll be um, too gold to go up. Uh, but we're getting away from you at this point. Yeah, and that's fine by me, so... <laughs> Well, I think I will, I will probably fail this too, but why not? I'll go for an intimidation check. Yeah. And I'll just be like, you don't want to be between me and where I'm going right now. Yeah, slightly better. Eight. <laughs> it's his job to be between me and where I'm going. Nah, it's true. And he pauses for a moment. He's really looking at you. Really looking at you. He says, I. Be on your way. So I scoop past them. Scroll perception. I have my coins while you're there. Uh, that is a perception? I mean, that is a 12. So, you can uh, see him as you kind of glance behind. He puts his hand up to his uh, ear and he kind of gestures in a direction. Hmm. His lips move. Okay. That is interesting. Now I'm thinking that somebody's going to be talented. But same idea. Just okay. I keep an eye out. You, but I'm moving. I'm still keeping an eye out for those two. Mm-hmm. But I'm now moving at a slower pace, making sure I can still see them, but keeping an eye out over my shoulder to make sure nobody's going to come and fuck with me. Sounds good. You don't see any but roll perception. Jesus, this dice is not doing me good today. Switch it out. Let's do her. My bag. There it is. What was that though? Uh, that was a speed. Okay. So as you you look behind you, you look in front, you're moving a little bit slower, you don't really see anybody. You uh, push the, the doors open to district number two and you can just see Nani and uh, and Galus off in the direction. Very easy to spot the tall the tall elven female. Okay. And small. And tall and small. It sounds like a TV show. From your right hand side And from your left hand side, two guards grab you. One on the left hand side grabs your shoulder firmly. A roll on, well, uh, this this just happens. I'll get your acrobatics after if you want to try. The other yeah. one doesn't really succeed very well, just kind of helping the other guy. Okay. And they hold you and they say, I, my friend, looks like you're coming with us if you're not going to pay the fee to enter the district. <laughs> All right. Well, let's try for an acrobatics check to see if I can get away from Buddy. That's a lot better. That's a 17. With bonuses? With bonuses. Okay, you do not get away. Damn it. He holds you tight. He got that 17 is... on the dice. He got what, sorry? 17 on the dice. Oh, dang it. So his grip on your arm stays firm, and he says, I, he looks like we got a live one here. And they start <laughs> walking you off. <laughs> oh, man. All right. Well, let's, let's try for... You didn't get him killed the first time. So no, I didn't get him killed the first time, exactly. Um, you know what? Let's go. And. Because he's. Because I've still got my arms, like, in a cloak. I'm just going to pop out of the cloak and leave him hell hanging on to it. Okay, so you can uh, yeah, roll your. Uh... Now that they're walking you off, they both get a better grip on you. Mm-hmm. Roll in uh, acrobatics right. with a minus two, please. Acrobatics minus two. That's a 21, so 19. Okay. 21 is... Uh, is Cause, yeah, it's 21 with bonuses and then minus the two. Okay. So you slip out of the cloak, and then as you slip out of the cloak, you kind of hit some of the things you have hidden in the cloak mm-hmm. and a dagger falls out another dagger falls out and they look down and they say hi we got a thief here do we 
as you kind of get away, and then as you're running away from them, they kind of holler out in uh, in Dwarven. Which is perfect, because I understand Dwarvish. Yep. <laughs> and they say, they holler out and they point at you, they say, Thief! Thief! And you can see, off in the distance, you can see two or three other of these liveried men kind of look in that direction and start making their way making their way through. You guys also hear this from be from behind you. Which way are you running? Uh, Left, right, or straight? Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to find the nearest building and just basically try and disappear. Okay, District 2. Immediately to your right is Gelm's Pious Plate. Pious Plate? Pious. Oh, plate. Pious. Pious plate. Is that where we went? Yeah, meat pies. Uh -huh. Meat pies. Best meat no, pies. no, no. That wasn't it. <laughs> you, you slip into this place and uh, you open the door and you close it behind your sword. Roll, uh, roll stealth for me, please. Frank and Gayla's window fancy. Twenty-five. Twenty-five. Restaurant. Just sat there. That, that's with bonuses. <laughs> no worries. No worries. Okay. Yeah, Eighteen on the die. So you kind of, you're running by, and it's still pretty crowded up there in District 2, and uh, you kind of slip in, and you open the door, and you close it, and kind of put your back up against it, and you kind of look out, and you can see two shadows. <laughs> Another shadow go by this way, <laughs> that way. You take a deep breath, and then you hear, <clears throat> Can I help you, sir? He just, he's like, what? For a meal, obviously. He can just kind of smell, I'm assuming, what's going on, so. You turn around, you realize immediately that it is a restaurant. Yep. You can see people dressed in this lavish clothing as they sit there, mm -hmm. and he looks you up and down and he says, I don't think you're in the right place, my friend. <laughs> ah. They're a little racist here. A little racist? Frank and Gabriel. Classist. Yeah, classist economist. Yeah. Classist economist, whatever you want to call it. Oh. Uh, um. Fail at it, but I've, I've been failing all throughout. We might, we might as well have some fun with it. Great start. A great right? start, man. I, I'm loving it. I mean, it's only going to get better from here. Failure makes things fun. It does. Um, I think, yeah, I'll just go for a, uh, a persuasion here. And I'll just be like, I, I think I know exactly where I am. I'm perfectly content. Thank you. Well, persuasion. Nineteen. You're just, every time you... <laughs> <laughs> so he looks oh, at I'm you and he it. says... You he like says, well, you... Do you like crazy? <laughs> if you're going to eat here, you got to show me your goal first. He just has a little pouch attached to his belt and he just drops it in front of him. He uh, gingerly opens it up with his two fingers and he says... How much is in there right now? Uh, 50. 50 gold minus the, or no, you didn't spend, you spent 10 gold of that. Oh yeah, so it would be 40. 40. I thought they took your money when they took you before. He, he gave it, they gave it all back. Yeah. When, uh, nice when they, when they, when I, when I left the, uh, the co-building, they gave me all of my stuff back. Okay, I understand. He looks in the pouch and he shakes it a bit with his hands outstretched and he says, Hi, eating for one, are we? Mm -hmm. And he just takes the whole bag. Oh. Oof. Oh, sorry. Right. Come this way, sir. And you order from the kids' menu. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, you are given this uh, rack of lamb, or some sheep or goat. You're not quite sure. <laughs> uh, <platypus. laughs> and it is delicious. It's great. The potatoes are roasted to perfection. This wonderful garlic. These wonderful spices, this melange, you're not even... It's been a long time since you've had this intense flavor oh, yeah. in your food. Like this restaurant has just, you know, oh, no, maybe no, no, no. purchased a big giant box full of different flavors from around the world. Yeah. Chase <laughs> any saffron in there. <laughs> and not for forty gold. That's <laughs> fair. <laughs> and you eat this wonderful, wonderful meal. Yeah. Gators. You know, you see what I was upset when you were using saffron in a travel suit. Didn't you <laughs> complaining when you were eating the food? <laughs> Galus and Nani. Come on, See, that's why we gotta have a, a video oh, soon. Yeah. Because <laughs> that's that's you can see me flipping everyone off. <laughs> no, you can see me change sitting positions way too much for that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, 
Okay. Yeah, it, would, it would be a serious getting used to kind of thing. Oh, yeah. We eventually might get there, but don't think about it now. Yeah. So, you guys see those guards run and run back and forth. And where do you guys go? You're at District 2 right now. You guys are around the Badagros College of Bardic Excellence, the second level, the Halls of Karath, the Crystal Sphere Theater, and the Sharon Capital Bank. That's what is mainly around. Other than that is small other shops, uh, cobblers, things like that. You know, butchers and stuff. Not so many butchers here, but all sorts of different Is there shops. any natural water sources on this level? There's not. Then up we go. You guys continue up, up top. <coughs> She you just miss? looks like she's searching for something. I actually don't know what it is. You uh, guys like... enter the stairs and you go up. You don't see a man in livery. You exit the the stairs to level three, and uh, or district three, sorry. This seems to be just houses, buildings. You can see people going indoors and, and staying in there. People leaving with uh, empty bags, going with full bags and boxes. You continue up. Is there any water on this level? There's not. Then we go up. Oh. Are you go up again? Nani's feet are getting Nani's tired. Nani's 300 years old. <laughs> She's running like a mother. <laughs> you guys uh, miss the uh, the man in liveries again, the guard, and you walk into this one, and you break out onto this floor, and you can smell it already when you open the door. You're right out front, or you're across the way from the Feldaren Finishing Academy, where those two open pools were. How busy is it around here? It's busy. It's busy enough. There is at least, at one time, someone within three feet of your location at all times. I'm completely blind to the people around me, and I just beeline in for the water. Okay. You move I'm towards the water. A few minutes pass, you guys are walking through through crowds, you're bumping into people <laughs> there, you know, you knock a, a dwarf over to, to the side of it, and it doesn't fall over, but he bumps it, maybe drops a bag or a box. Nani's there, just doing what she can to keep up, and you make it to within uh, 30 feet of the water in the Feldaren Finishing Academy. You can see, roll perception, both of you please, Nani and Bales. 13? Oh, plus something. Nine. I'm not right. even paying Nine attention. Nine, ten, attention, gotcha. Two. Fifteen. Fifteen? All right, as you guys are approaching, you are just going up to the, to the water. Gale, uh, Nani, you can see that there are uh, some dragonborn, some humans, some elves in this area, and they seem to be trimming the topiaries just ever so slightly. Like, I mean, cutting off a, a leaf here, a leaf here, just so particular, so fine. And you can see where they're walking. They're not even walking on the grass. They're walking on these stones, these shallow stones that are set in so you can move around. And Nani, and sorry, and Galus walks right up onto the grass, over the grass, and right up to the water. You can see all of the eyes from these people trimming just shoot over in her direction. What do you do, Galus? I dive head first into that water, just okay. full force. So you dive in and roll athletics. Drown. <laughs> <laughs> Apparently. Uh, yeah, that's that's a four. That's a four. So oh, the four. thing is, you don't notice that it's not deep. It's only about three and a half feet deep. It's enough to submerge me completely, though, right? It's it is. To so almost drown Nani. How tall are you? Uh, four feet. Four foot one. Yeah, you, can, <laughs> you can stand on tippy toes. Yeah. But you, uh... <laughs> You, you jump in and you hit the water and you go deep into the water and your, the side of your face and your hands kind of hit off the ground, but it's soft, it's dirt, like kind of a, a slimy kind of muck. Mm. And you flatten out and you are submerged in water. Nani, mm. you see these four or five dragonborn human elves rush over and you can see them not going in a straight line, they're kind of walking on paths around, you get to this main path and then they come down and they look in and one of them dropped the basket they had, the other ones got their hands on their head, 
and they're just looking at each other, and then they look at you. So they're all coming from one direction? Yeah, they all kind of siphoned into the walkway that leads up to the main doors, and came to meet you guys where you were. And they're not even really looking at you, they're kind of turned to the left where the water is. So I'm gonna position myself between them and Galus. So you're gonna walk on the grass? Sure. Okay, you begin to walk on the friends. grass, and one of them, with the hands on her head, she's like, No! No, what are you doing? Get off of the grass! Immaculus will have our heads! Get off of the grass, please! What's an Immaculus? He's a person. Who? Not you! What, what's an Immaculus? Oh, I'm asking you! Remember, remember she Gemna said we met when we first arrived at the college? No, I what's remember that? nothing! I'm naughty, I know nothing! She repeats it quietly to herself. What's an Immaculus? Uh, immaculus Kula. The director of the Felderan Finishing Academy and the Badadros College of Bardic Excellence. Are you not familiar with, with him? Set up a cooking fire. The Dazzler School of what? Oh my god. Oh my gods. What is your friend? You got to get your friend out of there. I'm also not swimming or anything. I just let myself lay face down in the bottom of the water. <laughs> like, she might be dead. <laughs> Maybe that'll be the better end of it. You must get your friend out of there before Immaculus sees. And she's looking at the grass. Oh, she puts her hands on her head again. There's big grass footprints putting the, pressing the grass down. It's, it's grass. It'll grow. Oh, it grows. It grows. It's grass. Oh, oh no. It doesn't grow? She says grass to the other one. Grow here? Go get the guard. Yeah, she, I threw up their world. <laughs> threw up? I didn't. No, I said that wrong. I threw off their world. She threw up. I did say that, but that's not what I did. threw it their world. You're like, here you go. Grass that doesn't grow. So I'm one of them- just inhaling water at this point. I- One of them runs off and you're still- I'm gonna try just letting it go. I'm gonna in. attempt yeah. to scoop her out of the pond with my frying pan on us. Like, attempt to lift her. I think it's gonna work. I'm a little heftier now. I mean, I can swim, but I don't want to swim. <laughs> She's floating, so you know, like a floaty, you can just probably push her, like, a, like a pool. You no, no, I'm laying on the bottom, so there's a little bit of water over top of me. Okay, so you're gonna yeah, hold just, on yourself. Yeah, I just like a crocodile. You're down there. It's pretty, pretty <laughs> difficult to hold yourself down there while pregnant. You're yeah, I'm heavy though. You no, you're still floating. I'm not, no, you no. float. Well, no, humans float. Babies, babies aren't rocks. You just like put stones in your guts. <laughs> There, there's enough of her where you can kind of dip it down and try and touch it. You do feel this, feel something kind of pull on your leg. It's kind of... Just ignore it and just, um, in the euphoria of breathing in water. Roll strength with advantage, or roll <laughs> athletics with advantage, please. She's gone crazy. She needs the outdoor world. Strength, you said? Yeah, with advantage. Oh, that's better. Um, what's a plus four? Yeah, 19. 19. Yeah, you were able to kind of move her. Her body's just kind of there, kind of moving slowly and slowly. You're getting, you can feel the things pushing on your legs, but you can also see a bunch of fish under here. There's a whole bunch of different things. And eventually you, you reach the top of the water because Nani's reeling you in. Now, while I was under the water, I was looking for a presence in my state of whatever. Did I didn't even like deliriously form one? No. Nope. Dang it! Didn't it was the whole point of anything. being there. No presence. But but you're in there probably, I would say half a minute before Nani gets you to the edge and kind of grabs your arm and kind of pulls you up and then you can. I fight her a little bit. Yep. Can I roll a pose? Yep. It's not gonna do anything. Oh, yeah, but... <laughs> yeah, that's a nat one. <laughs> yeah, that's it. She hits you with the frying pan. Yeah. Oh, that's it. yeah. Knocks me out completely. So you end up getting pulled out. You just kind of shake it off. Just uh, you thought you thought you would see something, but but it just it wasn't there. It, it wasn't there this time. And they pull you out, and then you can see these four uh, people dressed in colors of Feldera. And you can see them, they're just this stressful look on their face, and they're looking at you, and one of them's kind of glaring really hard, hips, hands on her hips, and then you can hear her from behind you. Well, what do we have here? I don't turn around. I, I do. Just, I, I try to step back in the water. Can just, I, like... One hand, yeah. One hand on the back of Galus's shirt. As far as you can reach. <sighs> this isn't good. I find it interesting that Nani is the uh, Voice same reason. one of this. Uh, I'm yeah, it's insane. <laughs> but my entire life goal is to 
keep her alive now. At this point, yeah. And then the guards speak up and they say, I, are you not aware that it's not permitted to go swimming in the gardens? Did you, am I, am I turned around now? I didn't turn you around. I'm still, I'm still facing the water. You don't jump into the water again. And I just shake my head. Vehemently <laughs> shake my head. Mm -mm. Well, looks like you're both coming with me. Come and I on. shake my head again. <laughs> mm -mm. He looks at I'm still the trying to get away him, from Nani. Looks the other guard behind him and says, Grab them. Take them. Roll strengths. Strength checks, guys. Athletics, please. Oh, that's not good. Oh, baby. That's one. Oh, that's not terrible. Fifteen. Fifteen? Uh, that's ten. Ten? Alright. I got away from you. <laughs> <laughs> so they all, and they... And then I get arrested. Yeah, they, they both walk on the grass to get you. <gasps> hey, we did bad. <laughs> we did real bad. Oh, no. You're oh, under no. arrest. You're under arrest. <laughs> As you say that to them, they just kind of... They look they know even, you're nuts even cross, and they grab you by the arm. Galus, they grab I, you by the hey. arm, Nani. Yeah. Hey. Touch I'm struggling, but clearly I'm not going Pause up. And they haul you both away. She's pregnant. Stop it. They don't care. No, they don't care. We walked on the grass. But they walked on the grass. And they take, take you to court. They take you to the head. other side. And they go up a set of stairs. Maybe two. And they come to a room. And they take you into that room where there are cells. And you are placed in a cell together. At least we're together. The yes. iron bars slide shut, clink closed, and they say, I, that's where we're ending for tonight. Oh, um, I get one phone call. <laughs> <laughs> I get one message. I need to talk to someone. Bravo! Thank you for watching the Death Needs Dialogue Entertainment Network. This has been the Depths of Feltham, Episode 15, Grave of Eden, Part C.